Hey, John. Morning, John. Morning, John. We're Right Said Fred. This yes. is Fred's podcast, and we're very, very fortunate to have John Bow with us. Exactly. Uh, so thanks for joining us. Now, uh, one of the things I was going to say to you, John, which, which struck me immediately when I started reading some of your um, the bio and stuff, is you have quite a large family, six children, I think. I'm right to say it. So, yes, I have a son, a son by my first marriage and uh, uh, my third marriage to Emma, which we've now been together over 30 years we have five children so six all together oh. three boys oh, wow. and three oh. girls oh perfect doing my bit oh, wow. the planet. <laughs> <laughs> excellent <laughs> um to what extent i just wondered when i was looking at that I, I wondered to what extent that having a family like that a large family it, um informed you when it came to the whole you know the the, the vaccines and jabs particularly for children and the and, and younger adults did, did that uh, um, was that part of your thinking or not um once I had worked out that uh, something was very wrong, mm. um, of course, I was uh, not only deeply concerned for my immediate family, but um, or my children, but um, but also for the world at large. And um, yes, as the uh, years now have <laughs> gone on, um, it's yeah. uh, it's got more and more difficult for my immediate family, my wife, and uh, we still have... Uh, uh, three young children well two young children staying with us here right. uh, one of my older children are, is staying here temporarily um and uh, although they're completely on board with me not because mm. of any indoctrination but uh, from their own understanding of what's going on um okay, okay. it is you know it has uh, become very it's become a strain. It's become mm. very difficult for us all. And, uh, mm. you know, we're hanging on by our fingernails. Okay. Yes, all right. exactly. Because exactly. So, you, your, your journey is quite interesting. I was going back through, and I know it's difficult with tweets because tweets can be fabricated. So please tell me if I've got any of this wrong. Um, but as I understand it, initially you were sort of on board. You thought, you thought um, the because it was so many unknowns, the government narrative was correct. Is that, is, am I correct with that? Yep. And, yeah. Um, and, so, so this year you thought lockdowns and everything kind of made sense because we didn't know what we were dealing with. Uh, but it was later in the year, I believe, um, when you when you saw Pierre Corrie do a speech. To the Senate, and, yeah. To, to the Senate, and that was your sort of tipping point. Is, is that right? Correct. I mean, I've said, I've said uh, in, a, in a number of interviews, uh, particularly on GB News, uh, you know, that uh, I forgive uh, the government and everybody else and even myself <laughs> for um, right. our reaction to what was going on because we didn't know so much and we were all flailing right. around in a darkened room and you're subject to um, pictures from Italy of uh, hospitals overflowing mm. and being crowded and, you know, the, all that, that the, 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 uh, the, the information that you were receiving mm. plus uh, the intent of perhaps uh, some members of the government or people working for the government instilled such an incredible fear and terror yes. of, in all yes. of us of what was coming that uh, you know everyone was flailing around in a darkened room yeah. and so we all were all on board with yes we must you know together we'll have the lockdown we'll do what we're told you know uh, so yes at the beginning of course I was it was only when it got to Christmas 2020 right and of course you know, we all had a lot of time on our hands. So, so <laughs> Didn't we know, just? I was uh, I was reading a lot and trying to understand what was going on, trying to understand the virus, the emerging information of the virus. And um, I, I can't remember how it happened, but there was a sort of casual um, back and forth tweet with uh, uh, Jimmy White, the snooker player. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Who, who's okay. just qualified for the UK Championship. Well done, Jimmy. Oh, cool. Uh, Good for him. Man. Good for him. Uh, he, uh, he mentioned ivermectin to me. Okay. Right. Right. And uh, I started um, digging down into ivermectin and discovered that this um, Dr. Pierre Corey was um, giving a submission to the Senate in Washington um, just around Christmas time in 2020. So I watched that. And I was so moved by his emotion, by his information by the mm. results of his in vitro and in vivo um, tests and trials that he'd done with ivermectin, which is a 40-year-old well-known drug. 
you know, one of the exactly. top four safest drugs in the world, according <laughs> to the World Health Organization. And I yes. use that phrase, World Health Organization, <laughs> with some huge <laughs> reservations. Some skepticism, yes. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, ivermectin, so I, I, um, I, I pursued that. And I did some tweets about that. And incidentally, regarding tweets, I, d I stand by nothing I've ever tweeted. I stand by what I tweet today. You know, okay, right. what was then was then and what is now is now. I, no, I, absolutely I, right. Yeah, 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 exactly. I, I just drives me mad sometimes when journalists and reporters, and I use those terms loosely, Again. Um, you know, dig down on something you said four years ago. And <laughs> yeah, they do. Make, they, it. they love it, don't I'm they? In that. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, um, I, I started uh, tweeting about ivermectin and the British Ivermectin Recommendation Development Board, BIRD Group, yeah. uh, yes. got in touch with me and asked me if I would like to be on their board, which I, I said yes, and um, which introduced me to Dr. Tess Laurie, right. who yes, had we, we, done, we, yeah. she also had watched Pierre Corrie's um, uh, submission to the Senate in Washington, and she had done a meta-analysis of ivermectin and um uh, which was phenomenal um, right. this is bizarre listen to this did you know yeah. that the, the the medical world has league tables for meta-analyses no i didn't know that no thousands of them right and okay dr laurie's meta-analysis of ivermectin figures in the top five. <laughs> oh wow right i okay. said to her because i uh, i done some work on a campaign a few years earlier to release the to get the um chennai six released um uh veteran guys who'd been yeah, i saw that yes I saw that. wrongly arrested and imprisoned and they were in prison for four years in chennai I, I tried to help the campaign and we did succeed in the end in getting them out so i got Brilliant. to know a few mps so yes. i said to um tess laurie i said look um uh, why don't i try and get this to the you know the government and and see mm. what they can do so um i talked to the mp and uh i won't name the name but um they said that they would get their um, assistant spad or whatever they're called um to right. deliver it by hand to the department of uh, the the health and social care committee at right. that time headed by jeremy hunt <laughs> i mean Shopping nothing chat. by the way i said that <laughs> Um, it's copy slang, by the way. Mm. <laughs> to this day, I, uh, I, I, the, none of us have received any recognition or acknowledgement that they'd received. Um, right, the test yes, no surprise. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Doesn't surprise me. Yeah. But so, I, and then, sorry, just to finish the story. Then, no, no, yeah. not at all. Um, the whole emergency use authorization thing happened uh, in um, early twenty twenty one. Yes, for right. the. Uh, for the mRNA vaccines. And yes. of course, emergency use authorization can only be bestowed if there is no known existing treatment for the condition that you are producing the yes. uh, protocol for. Uh, and of course, so ivermectin was suppressed. Ivermectin yes. was, nobody wanted to talk about it. The, the pharmaceutical companies, um, you know, in league with the FDA and the CDC in America um, wanted their emergency use authorization they had a huge financial interest in both the boards of the FDA and the CDC and the NIH in America. So yeah. uh, that was easily waved through. Mm. Um, and I, uh, I was appalled by this. So that's what got my mm. dander up. And I started um, digging deeper and deeper into the vaccinations. And you know, first of all, uh, learned about Mike, Dr. Mike Eden and etc. 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 To cut a long story short, uh, yeah. uh, after I created the um, the charity. I um, just a, a month or two ago, I was in Ireland for the health conference there, and spent some wonderful time with uh, people like uh, Dr. Robert Malone, um, right. oh, Richard you. Urso, Dr. Richard Urso, Dr. Ryan Cole, who is uh, um, a wonderful, wonderful man. Um, right. So yeah, I'm fully on board now with um, because my beloved ivermectin was so suppressed. Um, only two cents. Two cents a pill to make, That's right. which is another yes. reason why the pharmaceutical <laughs> industry aren't interested in it at all. <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. Okay. Um, so uh, you know, I, 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 I'm thoroughly on board with um, a, a, a thorough investigation and an understanding of uh, how these mRNA vaccines work. I won't bore you with ACE2 receptors and 
polymerase, right. but I've learned an awful lot over the past couple of years. Right. But, yes, but, I saw your interview with Mark Stein, and what you were saying was uh, was was, was interesting. And that's that's a, that's above my pay scale. I don't, I don't understand. What, one, what, one of the interesting things, either. yeah, one of the interesting things for me was um, reading about Dr. McCulloch, who. Who, who advised a lot of uh, early treatment protocols with off-label drugs. And what was interesting about that was he was saying that they came up with a protocol which involved you know, hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin and azithromycin and a few others. You know. um, and uh, he developed this protocol and he thought he would be lionized. He would be the Champions, this big yeah. hero because yeah. for him it was getting it was preventing hospitalization rather than leaving it too late until you're on a ventilator and then it's, it's, it's game over. And he was surprised. Use. That, was the, that he, was the way out. But of course, we were all being told to stay at home and wait until you're, you're <laughs> gasping for breath for near death and then, and then go to take you in and stick you on a ventilator. Ex yes. Ex no ex exactly. well, yeah, one, one yeah. thing very quickly, John, about the ivermectin. When I was in hospital, um, it might have been COVID, it might have been asthma, I don't know what it was. But either way, um, as I, I was only in there for about two days, and then I asked the, the consultant about, I said, have you ever heard of ivermectin? And the consultant looked quizzical and said, can you spell it? Which was a bit of a start. So I said, <laughs> <laughs> so I said, so I spelt it. She was, she was 25. She was a young, a young, a young woman. So she flipped open her phone, Googled it. And then within five seconds, she shut the phone off and that was it. Mm. Not interested in the least no. bit in discussing it. And I thought what was troubling is you don't have to, as a specialist, you don't necessarily have to think it works, but you should at least know it's out there. Yes. Yeah. You know, there are, there are uh, over a, there are a, over a hundred um, randomised clinical trials that show it has anything from a sixty-five to eighty-five percent efficacy. Um, right. In comparison with when well, you've watched the uh, uh, the documentary, so you'll know that the mRNA vaccines have uh, of actual actual uh, uh, risk. Yeah. Um, uh, what is it? It's relative risk and actual and, and risk reduction. Yes, yes, relative related reduction it's, is what yes. they punted first with the exactly. mRNA vaccines. Hey, it's five percent relative. 95 yeah. percent relative yes. risk reduction. but if you look at the actual risk production, uh, risk reduction, reduction it's something yeah. like zero point eight of one yes. percent. Yes, that's right. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. But uh, yeah. the ivermectin, yes, when used as a prophylactic, that is, as a preventative. So that you don't, it's it works brilliantly. It stops the um, the spike proteins uh, uh, latching Atta onto the human Attaching. cells. That's right, right, okay. Right, so right. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's right. used. It's uh, here's a, here's an interesting fact. It's used. It's used all over um, Africa or large yeah. parts of Africa um, to prevent people getting um, African uh, river blindness L that's and right. scabies. That's right. and, various parasitic infections also works for malaria, I believe, and there's some mm. talk about cancer. But um, people take it as a matter of course in some countries in Africa. And if you look yes. at the incidence of COVID there, yeah. very low. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's, known, it's, sorry, go on, yeah. yes, it's known as Sunday Sunday in some parts of Africa because you take it every Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's, that's and, of course, and of course, uh, Uttar Pradesh. Uttar Pradesh in India uh, used it and uh, pretty much eradicated COVID-19 there. India's India's a hard thing to explain to people because um, all the different states in India yes, are really yes. are self-governing. So uh, Uttar Pradesh went in strong. In fact, I think they took Pfizer to court for, for misinformation. How ironic is, it, is that? Yes, I, exactly, I know, exactly, exactly. Right. Right. Well, well, welcome back to Fred's podcast. Uh, just um, so people know, we had some technical problems. Which is why we're all now dressed differently and look good. <laughs> and John's in a Quick different. Change. Yeah, it's a quick change, yes. and also we look much more young, much oh, younger, and fabulous. Yes, yes. I've so, had surgery since then. Yeah. So welcome back. To <laughs> thanks for th thanks for joining us. And sorry about the technical problems. I think we'll ho fingers crossed we don't we're going to get those those again. Yeah. We've got a brand new mixing desk, so everything should be great now. So <laughs> can um, I change everything I've said so far? <laughs> yes. yes, you want to. You'd be more than welcome. In the light of current, yes, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. A quick bit of uh, redacting, yeah, ab ab <laughs> redact. That's what they call it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, just um, we, we won't bother trying to, you know, follow on and, or t tack it on. We'll, we'll just chat. Yeah. Um, now you've got a question about when, well, one thing when John was younger. Me, yeah, one thing that struck me, John, was um, uh, the list of your uh, acting achievements is is huge. I mean, it's you know from the BBC and the films and and the serials and all that. So we could sit here for at least half an hour and go through the list. But it, what what, I, what what struck me was that you were when you were doing that work, you were working in quite a compliant industry. 
I would imagine. Um, and then I read that you, when you were a child, you watched uh, Lord Soper at, uh, at um, Speaker's Corner. Now, Lord yeah, Soper. Yeah, not a child. When, just when I was uh, when I was younger and living in in London, maybe, oh, okay. maybe in my thirties. Uh, Oh, 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 I oh, see. Sorry. Oh, that's it's, okay. okay. Sorry about that. Well, he was, um, for people who don't know, he was a Methodist preacher and a socialist and a pacifist. So what I wondered was whether that planted a seed in your head when you saw that and it, it got buried and that, that contrarian thing in your, which has come out now in a way. So you, so you, I thought that was quite interesting to me that you worked within quite a compliant industry and then moved into this activist Maverick. Maverick role more. And I'm wondering whether the seed for that was 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 planted when you saw Lord Soper. Well, Richard, think... it's a nice romantic um, <laughs> telling of the story. Well, I, I am a romantic at heart, you see. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I, I have a place for that too, but uh, not in this case. It was just that, okay. um, uh, you know, with all the um, bombardment you get on Twitter, um, it just reminded me of uh, of that time when I used to when I was in London and passing Marble Arch. I used to go over to Speaker's Corner and um, yeah. and particularly watch Lord Soper because uh, he was quite an engaging speaker, um, uh, not one of my qualities, which is why I'm better in print and tweeting right. than I am speaking right. extempore or uh, improvised. I can do a good speech. I mean, if people write things, but yes. that's why I, probably why I was an actor because you know <laughs> I can deliver a good script. Yeah. But uh, I'm not very good off the top of my own head. But uh, yeah, it just reminded me of uh, of, uh, of Lord Soper and uh, and those times. I mean, he used to be uh, so beaten blue with uh, um, insults and um, and uh, barracking from uh, the people right. in front of him. But he kept going, and I was really impressed with that. And it actually, when I uh, thought about it the other day, it gave me strength to carry on with with Twitter, because sometimes it does beat you down. Um, it does. And sometimes you have to take a couple of days off. But um, yeah. no, that was the only reason I thought of that. Um, you talk about my career and... Uh, what do you think? I, I don't want this to sound ungrateful, but mm. it all stopped three years ago and it almost seems like another life. And uh, yes. I was explaining to some friends we had visit last week that... Um, I genuinely feel that I've been brought to this place or happened upon this um, stance that I've taken over everything. Um, and it's brought me to a, a meaningful part of my life. In fact, mm. it's so meaningful. I, I kind of think all the, the rest of my <laughs> life was just leading me to this place. Okay. And, I I just feel so strongly about it. Uh, incidentally, I, I tweeted um, a speech by a Dr. Shoemaker in Canada this morning. I don't know if you saw my tweet. Um, no. It's it's 13 minutes. It's 13 okay. minutes. He's on Rumble, Dr. Shoemaker. Okay. And he's okay, we'll tweeting, that clearly giving in a street somewhere or in a square. And um, it's 13 minutes of absolute gold. It's everything I've been saying for the past three years. People, oh, wow. please pull that up on Rumble or on my timeline or whatever and listen to yeah. Dr. Shoemaker for 13 minutes. And I say we that will. because, you know, these friends I had visit um, the, uh, last week, uh, uh, it, it is so exhausting and depressing having to churn out all the information that I have. I mean, I, um, they came, I think, with partly a, an idea of uh, talking some sense into me. Um, however, a couple of hours later, I think they left rather ashen-faced and promising to do more research and, and find out. And um, I take no pride or, or pleasure out of any of that. Uh, it, it's just... It's exhausting and draining. Yeah. It, is, yeah. it is. Yeah, it is. I agree with you. Yeah, I agree. Well, I mean, I, I, personal thing, we're all different. I have to um, measure my um, my involvement in this because I've I've suffered with not suffered. I've had depression for a long, long time, and I have to really measure myself with the amount I go on Twitter, with the amount of conversations I get involved with. Um, and the amount of research I do as well, because sometimes it's just one bad news after the other. One, you know, do you know what I mean? And it just the way beats, beats you down. It does, and so and I we we were 
away this weekend doing a, doing a TV show. And I have to say, um, it was really nice because I, just, I, don't, I didn't look at my phone. I didn't uh, I, I did a couple of tweets and stuff about the about the gig, but nothing much. And and I had forty eight hours away from the madness mm. and um, being called a Tim Fall hat and a, you know, the usual insults that get thrown yeah. around. You know. Also, what what I found interesting that the, the um, we, where we were the studio that we we're in everybody. I mean, there must have been hundreds of people within the building. Everybody pretty much was masked up. But I mean, we weren't. We they, they said, asked us, but we they said, before. do you have a mask? So we said no. They said, okay, come in. They were very but, nice. Yeah, they were completely relaxed about it. Um, but what you what I sensed was that at least fifty percent of the people in there knew it was BS. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They did. Yes, yeah. Sorry, you know, say, say that again. At least fifty percent of the people within this TV studio, the production team, the sound, everything, at least fifty percent, probably even more, knew that it was all nonsense. Yeah. Knew yeah. that yeah. their that their the mask mandate made absolutely no sense. And um, and that that for me, and what you were saying earlier about the way it, it, this has brought you to a place which is very different from where you were, it's kind of the same with us in a way. We started off just being fluffy and all that pop band, yeah. little pop band, and then suddenly you realise actually there's a there's meaning to it. There's meaning to where you are. There's yes, meaning there is, yeah. to yeah. to what this is. And I was going to ask you mm. whether you think you know we've been we've been beaten down with, with COVID and whether it works, whether it doesn't work, and the deaths and the injuries and everything else, do you think there's something else going on behind this? That COVID is a, a kind of hors d'oeuvre? Uh, uh, yes, all the um, conspiracy theories mm. and depopulation and all that. Do you know what I have? I took a very early decision to blinker mm. myself and just deal with, first of all, ivermectin and, and yep. then with uh, the uh, injurious nature of these mrna injections yeah. Uh, yeah. i know all i know all the theories the fears the um the wef uh mm -hmm. terror and uh, the the uh involvement of all governments in the world and i understand i you know i i, I hear all that but i choose yeah. not to 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 go there because I, okay. I, otherwise my message gets blurred i want to keep my message yeah. simple and my message yes. now is let's save the children that. Yes. Okay. 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 I, I get that. Right. I get that. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so let's just touch touch on your um, charity, which is the uh, yeah, which is COVID, which is the um, char char charity of... organisation for the vaccine. For sorry, vaccine sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I thought I'd remembered that, yeah. but I didn't. Um, yeah. Could you just? <laughs> you wouldn't um... be an actor, would you? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. No. Be. Uh, could you ju just um, give us a little, little, tell us a little bit about that because it's, it's a relatively new um, project, isn't it? Uh, very new. In fact, uh, um, it was June, July of this year when the light bulb went on, and I thought, you know, what? Where do I turn now? I've right. uh, ivermectin. We've been bashed to death over that, and uh, but I will keep on about ivermectin. Um, mm. The the uh, the government narrative has drowned us all with the uh, with the complicit uh, MSM news outlets. Now that's yeah. that's one of the biggest. Horror of this whole story is uh, how we're not allowed to voice our narrative or challenge their narrative on the airwaves, and that's yeah. uh, that's a terrifying aspect of this. Uh, you know, my wife's 103 year old grandmother is upstairs, and uh, she talks about uh, in her life and the war she went through, and uh, can't cannot believe that yeah. it's possible that the BBC won't, you know, yeah. talk about. Um, uh, everything that I'm talking about, exactly. um, but there we are. It's uh, it's that's a terrible aspect of it. I've rather lost my way now. With the question, um, no, just about you, um, about the, the the charity and how how new it was. Yeah, and you yeah. had a light bulb moment. Oh in yes, June. Yeah, yeah. I, yes, yes. Uh, so so June July of this year, um, we have a we have a little place in in southern Italy. Um, it's barely habitable. Um, and there's a beautiful um, olive grove. And I was there for three months. A long story to do with uh, with my dog, who's in the other room, um, who comes from southern Italy. But um, <laughs> I rescued him and brought him back with me. Um, but uh, I was down there for three months clearing up the uh, the olive grove and, and, and stuff like that and just trying to get my head straight. And um, <clears throat> before I came back, I, uh, this light bulb, I had this light bulb moment thinking, what? Wh which way do I turn now? What can I do? And then, of course, I thought, well, we, what we have to do is save the people who've been injured by this yes. and, and help them. And uh, 
pretty soon after I got back and started with this idea, I um, through all kinds of circuitous routes uh, got in touch with uh, Dr. Robert Malone, uh, Dr. Ryan Cole, um, Dr. Mm -hmm. Richard Urso, you know, all the great names on our side of the narrative and uh, and decided to set up this uh, 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 helpline, a, a call center, I thought then, uh, and did a lot of work on the internet trying to work out how I was going to do this. Um, and to cut a long story short, by August the 18th, literally a month and a half later, right. I had volunteers and we had the uh, thanks to Balls Coin Telecommunications and uh, Luke Simmons, who, who runs it, who was totally yeah. on our side. Um, we managed to set up a, a system that didn't require us to have a call center uh, premises that, that's the big thing that i was worried about and he said i can do it all on the internet so that's how right. we, we set it up and we launched it on august the 18th i mean how quick is that people yeah, well, whinge about the fact that i haven't registered my charity yet but no, I saw that all online, the papers yeah. are with our executive um and the postal strikes have played oh, havoc no. because we got neil oliver in scotland we've got dr tina Piers in the southeast of england i'm in the southwest of england well, right. you can imagine getting all the yes. forms and the declarations and everything signed. It's been a nightmare yes. trying to pass yes. it around the country. Um, yeah. Is it so? That, and, that's, uh, the Vax, that's what, sorry, John. That's the Vax injured helpline, isn't it? Yes, it, this, this it is, line. and that was the whole purpose of setting up the charity and the whole reason why I did the Just Giving Pave page, which raised. Mm. Now, let me let me go on record here. We raised right. uh, over thirteen thousand uh, on oh. the. Um, just giving page, but after just giving had taken its cut and everything, it was around about twelve thousand. We right. spent uh, nearly a thousand on insurance for uh, the organisation. We had to cover ourselves with insurance. Uh, we've spent nearly two thousand on the telecommunications aspect of it all and making sure everybody had the right equipment and yeah. uh, the right connections and downloads, etc., etc., etc. And uh, yeah, and uh, so we've got about 9,000 left, I think. But it, on a rolling, we have to pay monthly for various aspects of the, uh, yes. uh, of the, the line and the, yeah, the phones right. and stuff and yes. connections. But, um, but that's, that's where we are at the moment. We're, we're, uh, uh, as soon as my executive's got the papers sorted out, we'll be uh, sending in our application to the Charity Perfect. Commission. And then, believe you me, I will be the first person to post our charity <laughs> yes, registration look. number online. Good for you. Good for you. Exactly. Okay. So, Shut but, people up. Yes, but the exactly. Whole point, the, whole point, the whole point, the whole point, can I just say, the whole hmm. point of that, not the whole point, but part of the point, is uh, not, not just to help those um who are vaccine injured and direct them to some help and some protocols that will perhaps uh, help them fight these spike proteins and lipid nanoparticles, but also to embarrass the government into doing something. But this should be run by the government. The government should have a helpline out there, or yes. if they're going to do it through 111, they should have proper um, doctors and psychologists on call so that they can help people yes. and talk people and guide people to help. Uh, yes, so exactly. that's, you know, that's what I'm hoping. I sent, um, I had two hours with Sir Christopher Chope at Westminster a month or so ago. Mm. And I, um, I sent comprehensive documents uh, with six suggestions, which I've already published on Twitter uh, to, to uh, Rish, Rishi Sunak. Well, to, to the, 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 <laughs> The Realized present prime minister. At the time, I decided to address them to the prime minister and the health secretary. Not exactly. Who it might be. Yeah, exactly. but, um, uh, exactly. Of course, I've not heard anything back, but uh, no. I know it was delivered by hand to their offices. So I'm hoping okay. it's sitting there somewhere, or someone's, you know, uh, uh, about to respond to it. But uh, I'm just, okay. I'm just, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not pointing a gun at anybody. I'm just saying please 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 listen to what is being said and yes, listen exactly. to dr shoemaker on rumble or on my will. timeline will. which i will one thing I want to find that. A fantastically one thing I'll... crystal clear speech yeah we'll, right. we'll watch that one thing i will say about uh, sunak and the government and the, their general approach is that we have as a, a as a measure of their care as a measure of their concern for british people we have a prime minister who's buying 50 million pounds to the criminal Zelensky 
while we still have food banks in the UK. Mm. This is not a prime minister that cares about the British people. And my concern, although I, I really do admire optimism about this, my feeling is the British government and Whitehall don't care about the British people either. I truly yes. I don't think they do. No, because true. if they did, you're right. There would be a dedicated line to help these people. And we saw your performance, your, you know, your piece to camera in uh, Safe and Effective, Mark Sharman's uh, documentary. Mm. And it's heartbreaking. I mean, I, I shall never forget the guy in Glasgow who can't get out of bed, who started crying in front of the camera. Yeah, John Watt. Yeah. yeah, I mean, absolutely I was talking to him on the phone just last week, yeah. Well, yeah. How is he? Incredible guy. Yeah, how is he now? Um, marginally better. Really? But, um, really? I was trying okay. to impress upon him that this is, you know, what he's doing and the attention he's getting and the way he's speaking is mm. crucial to what is happening. And we're not just... Yeah talking about our country we're talking about the world five Absolutely. million people in the world have been injected mm. with this poison mm. yeah so yeah. you know it's uh also also john it's that the scaffolder who lost a leg remember in that documentary the scaffolder mm. lost a leg yeah, yeah. and Alex, gets gets I, yeah and I gets 100 yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, well, it's well, just what I'll do, John, I'll just quickly play. We've got a clip of Safe and Effective. So, for anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, I just want to run a, a very short clip um, just so they so put it put in call. The COVID vaccine has been hailed as a medical and logistical success. It's claimed that millions of lives have been saved, but there's growing evidence that the jab can have devastating consequences. They actually told my wife and two children that they had no hope and if I did survive it would be from the waist up. I thought I was going to die. I would go to bed at night not thinking I was going to wake up. Those injured by the vaccine feel unrecognised and abandoned by the NHS and a government they trusted. You take one for the team, so I, I took the vaccine, but now the team's run in the opposite direction. Just to let people know that when it goes wrong, there's like no help at all. The doctors don't know what to do with us. We're literally keeping each other alive. Yeah, that's a clip from it's, the safe uh, That's Scottish. So th it's heartbreaking, I think. It is heartbreaking, yeah. yeah. Um, just so you know, we're, we're actually... Yeah, Ast um, AstraZeneca. Um, who talks about that now? Yes, yes exactly. I know. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're um, hoping to be part of um, um, Safe and Effective getting screened next uh, next year. At the Emmanuel Centre. Uh, yes, yeah, we are. So we'll keep you posted about that. Yeah, we're talking we to um, Cathy Gingle this yes, afternoon. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, because we had a, we had um, dinner with her and Mark Sharman. So, we're, yeah, we're, we're, I'll, I'll, I'll email you about that. And obviously, yeah. there's probably something you might want to... What you might want to be involved in. Yeah. Um, and I think also what's interesting, I don't know about you, but uh, there's the other documentary called Died Suddenly. Now, that seems to be getting a lot of push and seems to be accepted on, on, on quite a few platforms, whereas Safe and Effective seems to have been pushed to one side and marginalised. Now, Have you got any thoughts on that? Has, has, has that struck you or you haven't noticed that? Um, I knew about most of the stuff in Died Suddenly because obviously with uh, talks with um, Ryan Cole, um, mm. uh, yeah, it's uh, I, I, you know, I don't care as long as the message gets out there. I think that yeah. there are there are some problems with um, uh, died suddenly because they used some footage to illustrate stuff which chronologically was not right. Um, right. So right. you know, people criticizing it have jumped on that to discredit the whole thing, which is ridiculous. Mm. Um, uh, and uh, I, I mean, there was one thing in. Uh, someone pointed out to me there was one thing in safe and effective a second opinion a second opinion we used um a uh, a table which was um published by a um a, a worrying organization um that was pointed out and used to discredit us but as i pointed out in fact the actual figures since we did that have gone beyond the figures shown in the table so, yes <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. Uh, I think it was. I think it was a bears chart or a. Um, oh, okay. Something right. like that okay. we, we used, right. and we had obviously sourced it from the wrong, the wrong source. Yes. But uh, it, it's yeah. immaterial. And and the worst mm. thing that YouTube could come up with to strap underneath uh, our our uh, documentary was mm. this may contain misinformation. It may not. Beyond. It may yeah, not. Well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that, that should be a strap line under every single uh, mainstream news media item. news item. Absolutely. You know, I mean, exactly. Yeah. Pretty, the, the, guys, the guys at Oracle and Mark Sharman were absolutely hot on, yes. uh, on, on the detail. And Mark 
quizzed me a lot about the charity status because I saved my charity organization from mm. the vaccine injured in the in the film. Um, yes. And I assured him that it was going through due process. And uh, our executive is Bishop Kai Dewar, who's a Pentecostal bishop, who's done a lot of charity work for various churches. So right. I think right. he knows what he's doing. And he assured me that when you're in the process of applying for um, charity status, uh, you it is not wrong or illegal or for you to advertise yourself as a charity, as long yes. as you're right. conducting yourself legally as such. Right. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Right. Where, John, where do you think this is going? I mean, do you have a, uh, you know, with, with, with acting or well, it's like with, us, with the musicians, you have a sort of, there's a kind of road, there's a kind of a destination that you have in your head about what you want to achieve. This is a much more amorphous thing, isn't it? Where you are now and where we are now. Do you have a, do you have a view as to um, where you think this is going? I, no, I, you know, I, you know, because so often I've said, you know, oh, you know, in, in a month or two, this is going to hit them in the face. You know, the train's coming yeah. down the line. They're not going to be able to. Ignore. And um, it's, it's I leave it in the hands of the almighty. I, I'm not mm -hmm. sure how it's going to play out. But surely now, with all the information coming in from around the official statistics, from around the world, the Office mm. of National Statistics in our own country, the excess deaths, the um, decreasing birth rates, the increasing uh, stillbirths and infant mm. deaths. I mean, you, you can't ignore these things. I agree. They're not even challenged on our news no. program. No, I, I mean, that's I, the I, thing. I, you were talking earlier about, you know, talking to people and getting depressed about it. That's the yeah. big problem because I talk... To even members of my family, and mm. and I say you know some stuff that I've come up with, and they say, well, I haven't heard anything on the BBC about that. <laughs> yes. That's the big problem. I, it, I it is. Yes, it it is. Well, there, there's a neighbour of ours who actually said, and he's a lovely man, and he actually said, well, I do keep myself informed. You know, I read the Guardian every morning and watch Sky News, and I just thought, well, that's well, that's once that's. A tiny, that's a slice of what's going on here. Yeah, you I, might want to broaden your I, I personally, I, I don't know whether you agree with this, John, but I, in the town where I live, there's a vaccination centre. And in the top right-hand corner of the big banner which says vaccination centre, there's the NHS logo. The NHS, despite all the news about adverse effects and deaths and heart attacks and everything else, is still peddling vaccine. So the NHS, the frontline staff, and I've been in the hospital, they're, they're fine. But there's something rotten within the NHS, that it continues to peddle something which it knows is to harming people. I don't understand it any more than... I don't know, I don't know um, the mechanism by which uh, this whole catastrophe um, has happened, how deep it goes. I do know the medical regulatory bodies uh, in America, the NIH, the CDC, mm. the uh, FDA... Uh, are all captured by the big pharmaceutical companies and their money. Our mm. own MHRA is 86% financed by the pharmaceutical industry. Um, the EMA is captured, the European Medical Agency is captured by the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, all of this is clearly wrong. This should never have happened. They're marking their own homework. They're passing mm. and waving through things like uh, uh, these MHR, uh, uh, um, mRNA in injections, yep. Yep. Um, yep. pills like Paxlovid and Monupiravir. Don't get me on those. Um, <laughs> okay. it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, that's the systemic use of money to buy yes. influence is that's the happened. terrifying thing. And our democracy, our democracy, democracy is failing at the moment. We know communism is failing. Look, look what's happening there at the moment. Um, yep. Our democracy is failing, uh, and I, I, I suspect n not much by intent, but by incompetence and stupidity. We have a system that doesn't work, it, and when it does work, it's too slow. What's happened mm. in, um, in with this? Uh, right. At the, let me take one example. Right at the beginning of this pandemic, yep. you know, Boris, you know, bless his heart flailing around in a in a dark room influenced by witty and balance and sage and all he listens to is sage he doesn't mm. seek out opposing right. points of view 
before yeah. making yeah. a decision. It was interesting. Yeah. You were talking about Matt Hancock earlier. Interesting in the jungle when he started talking about um, people who are, you know, defense secretary or the health secretary. No, they're not across the brief, he said. You know, they get they get um, they get briefed all the time so that so, so that they know what they're talking about when they go to an interview. But, exactly. you know. Because he was being asked, you know, how does anybody know about industry? Who's 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 running? Industry? Well, they don't. He said, you know, they're <laughs> no. just they're, they're voicing what they've been told. Well, they're not yes. seeking out enough answers from people. That's exactly. right. So yeah. democracy exactly. yeah. is not working in that way. No, I agree. I, I watched a, um, a piece of um, um, an uh, Oxford uh, debate from many years ago with Peter Shaw. Um, and it was a, it was a, at the time when the EU was called the EEC, which is a much which at that time was a much more accurate description of what it was than what it became. And what was interesting about that, his wife was saying that he she, he was the only MP that she could name that had read the Rome Treaty, right. the only one. Mm. And that's what you're saying, essentially. Yeah, it is, yeah. That's exactly yes, what yeah. you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, what's your feeling? No, they're not for purpose. All six no, no. No, <laughs> no, no, you're hundred percent right. I, I, agree. I agree with you wholeheartedly. What's your feeling on the um, celebritization? Of, I don't even know if that's a word of of uh, of Matt Hancock. I mean, this this bizarre move into mainstream TV to try and become some sort of pinup. I mean, I or whatever you want to call his poster boy. Uh, do you think it's weird? Do you think what? what, what do you think there's a I I there's think. a hidden hand behind it? Do you think it's just him being an idiot? I mean, what, have you got a gut feeling about it? We, we, we are you. You've been on TV as you know a lot more weird, probably. All, all, all of the above. <laughs> um, I, I, um, it's unseemly is the word that mm. springs yes. to mind. Mm. Uh, I, I should think his constituents are pretty. Uh, they are. Um, Annoyed that he's uh, he's not in Parliament speaking for them, but uh, down in Australia making four hundred thousand um, pounds. Yes. And uh, and again, I had a little back and forth with Julia Hartley Brewer yesterday because um, you know she was aghast and astonished that the British public were keeping him in, and and I said, well, because I I have found in all my conversations with people they know nothing about the movement of the elderly from hospital into care homes no. without no. tests and the, therefore the spreading of the disease. They, they know nothing about my Dazalam. All no. they no. know is he fell in love. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree. He's not a bear of very great brain. No, I agree. No, he's I agree. not. No, but also, I, I think, th th I think there's a, there's a kind of perfect storm going on. Which, if you look at then, if you look at Zelensky with the high heeled shoes and and playing the piano with his penis, whatever it was he was doing <laughs> back in the day. Um, well, hang, you've on got to second, Rich, hang on a second, Richard, because <laughs> I played some pretty risque parts my, myself in the past. As, as I, I always know. say, that was then. This is this now. is yes, uh, yes. I'm just trying to <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine. You know, John Smith in a pair of briefs, or Peter Shaw, or, Peter Shaw, or Churchill in high-heeled shoes with his, with his with, with his fingernails painted. The the well, LGBT Churchill, that did, when he was at home, didn't wear anything. <laughs> no, I, that's that's right. the image nobody that's needs. True. I just think I, I think in, in, I think in a way, the, the people get the people they deserve, and we have to learn as an electorate to judge people on the content of their soul. And not on whether they've got a full head of hair and whether they've been on some celebrity program. Until we can learn to do that, and the House of Commons is full of people that genuinely care about their constituents and the country, nothing's going to change. Mm. And Sunak, you know, I'm sure he's a lovely, you know, until I'm sure he's a lovely guy. All he cares about, he's a multimillionaire. What does he care about? Food banks and and the elderly and yeah. Really? Did you honestly think he gives a crap? I don't think he cares at all. Doesn't give a second thought. No, no, no. I'm a, a bit of a narcissist. I think. Yeah. It's, his suit, yeah. John, his suits are too tight for a man who's <laughs> who's professed to be straight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and on that note. And on that note. Yeah, well, th thanks so much for joining us, John. Yeah. It's been really enjoyable. Thanks for thanks for your patience with the technical problems. Yes. Um, I've really enjoyed it. And we'll snip these two together and we wish well, you all the best. And, and, and we'll keep you posted on this uh, event because yeah. I think you'll be interested. We're going to scope out the Emmanuel Centre this afternoon. Yep. With, uh, with Kaki King. Please keep in touch, guys. Please you keep will. in touch. John, thank 100%. you so much. It's no, a pleasure. Absolute pleasure, John. Thank you very much. Cheers, Take mate. care, man. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.